This is part 13 of a series on building a full stack web application using Spring Boot and React, where you get to watch every line of code being written and a full app built from the scratch step by step. If you're new, start watching from this video. Okay, so we have a full stack app, which is React and Spring Boot. We need to deploy this. There are a few things we need to do before it's ready for deploy. So let's run through some of those things. The first thing is that these are right now two separate servers, okay? So this one's running, the React app is running in localhost 3000 and uh, the Spring Boot app is running in localhost 8080. We know that the Spring Boot app needs to run when we deploy it because that's what's running, you know, it has to run in a subject container because it has to serve the APIs. Now, the React app can possibly run in its own server but now the thing I'm thinking of is since I have a Spring Boot app anyway, why not have that Spring Boot app host this as well? Because when you build a React app, what you're gonna get is basically HTML and CSS assets, okay? So here's here's what that looks like. Now let me, let me build this thing. Uh, okay, first of all, let me fix these errors, all right? So there are a bunch of errors here, which we're gonna have to, which we're gonna have to fix. So let's do that. So let me kill this thing here and uh, let's do a yarn build. And uh, you're gonna see it generate a bunch of HTML and CSS and JavaScript files into like a dist folder. So it's, it's creating an optimized production build, okay? And when it's done, you will find this build folder over here. You see this? This is the build folder with everything ready, okay? So we have this HTML assets, which we can put into our Spring Boot application and have that connect to that API directly so that we can just have one app which runs. Okay, that was one of the advantages and one of the reasons why I decided to build both of them in the same repo. So I don't have to do two different deployments. I can basically do one deployment with one inside the other. So let's get this application deployment ready. So it starts with first making sure we don't have any errors and warnings. So let's do a clean check of that. I think it's an important thing to do. So if you go to the, the errors here. So you see here it says compiled with warnings. So we're gonna have to fix those things. So I'm gonna do that quickly. Shouldn't take a lot of time, but it's good to have a, like a clean, uh, no errors thing here. So all these things are not used, so I can delete them. Um, all these things, it kind of shows in light color in, um, in VS Code, so that's helpful. Match small card is defined but never used in the match JS page. So let's actually clear that out as well. Match JS, match small card. You see here, this is slightly light in color. So I'm going to remove that as well. Another thing that you'll notice is when you load the page over here and uh, look at the console, you might see a few errors over here. Okay, so here are um, let's go to the console here. So you see here, this one is, let's reload this. Okay, so all the warnings are gone, but you see there's an error here. It says each child in the list should have a unique key property. What does this mean? This is usually the case when you have things, you know, going in and out of stuff, right? Something gets added, something gets removed. Well, what, what this is saying is when you have something which is looping, right? And you have multiple copies of a DOM rendered in your page, you need to make sure each one has a unique key property so that React can distinguish one from another, okay? So here is what it's talking about. So here I have team page where I'm rendering this match small card multiple times. Now this is getting rendered multiple times, but there's no way for React to track one versus another. It doesn't know what is the unique key for it to say, hey, this is one match small card versus another match small card, okay? It just cannot pick based on the team name because the team name may not be unique. So you need to tell it, hey, this is the thing called the key and this particular field is unique, okay? So the way I do that is by Picking, is there something on match? There should be a match ID, right? So let's find out. I'm gonna go to localhost 8080 slash team here. So there is a match ID, so I can use that as a key. So if I do that, 
if I provide that to React, then it's gonna be happy. It's gonna be like, okay, now I have something to track these individual matches, okay? Now it's not gonna complain anymore. Now, what is it used for? It's internal, right? You are not using it, but at least React is happy and it's gonna be like, okay, now it's not a problem. Let me refresh this. And now you see here, it doesn't get that error anymore. You need to do this for every, every occurrence of a loop which renders a DOM element to the HTML, okay? So there is one more place where we're doing this, actually two more places. So let's take a look at those. First is the this guy, right? This is also having the same problem. You see here, it's complaining. Each child in a list should have a unique key property. So this is happening for two places. One is the year and the other is the card over here. So let's fix them both. So I'm gonna go to the match page and I'm going to put a key property for each one of them. So year selector will have the key property be the year itself. We know that the year is not gonna be duplicate, so that can be a unique key to identify one versus another. Basically putting an ID here, right? So the year can be a good ID. And in the match page, well, again, I'm gonna have a key be whatever the match.id is, right? I'm printing one for each match, so I'm gonna say match.id. And this should handle both the errors and you should not have an error for this anymore. Did I save this? Yeah, I did save this. Each child of a list. Okay, it has to be over here. This is the child of a list, not the link. You see here, this li is the child of the list. So that's what it needs to track, not the one within it. Okay, let's see. Yeah, that's solved. Now, finally, I'm gonna go to the home page. This is also something that loops. Now I'm gonna have the key be, well, the team ID or the team name, that should be fine, okay? So I'm gonna have, um, what is the thing that's looping? Which is basically team tile, okay? I'm gonna have key equals team dot ID. Since this is an auto-generated key from the Spring Boot backend, I know that that is gonna be unique and it is not going to clash, okay? This is perfect. Now I have all the errors and all the warnings fixed. And now I can do one more build and it is going to render the HTML, CSS and JavaScript that is required for me to deploy this. Now, what does the Spring Boot side look like? How do I deploy on the Spring Boot side? Okay, so I'm gonna go over here. So this is, we are in the Spring Boot folder, right? So that's kind of like the root here. So if I look at uh, IPL dashboard, this is basically the root of a Spring Boot folder with the Maven package over here. So I can do Maven build, and it is going to create a build of this Spring Boot, okay? So I'm, I'm actually gonna use the MVNW. I think I might have to specify the batch, let's see. Yeah, okay. So let's see, there is an install, there is a deploy, install. All these are good ones to use. I'm gonna use deploy or maybe install. Build is for uh, the React side of things. For Maven, you're gonna have to do install. This is what happens when you do both at the same time. Full stack development, you end up confusing one with the other. Okay, invalid release target, 16. Okay, so I'm gonna have to create a release target with the with the Java version that I have, okay? So I'm gonna go to pom.xml here, and then uh, Java version, what's the Java version that I have? Let's take a look. I have Java 15, so let me make this Java 15. Now it's, it's loading everything and uh, creating a jar file, running the tests. We don't have any tests, but it's gonna do all that and create a jar file that we can deploy, okay? So this is what deployment looks like on the Spring Boot side, okay? So here it's generated a jar, which is, which is this guy, right? IPL dashboard 001 snapshot.jar, okay? So this is our 
jar file that we can deploy. So we basically have two artifacts, okay? We have the front-end artifact, which is build folder. It's like all the HTML and CSS. And we have the Java artifact, which is in the target, which is this jar file, all right? What I wanna do is take that HTML file and add it to the Java artifact, okay? If you look at our Java uh, you know, server, right? Our uh, local host called an 8080, this is what is our Spring Boot side of things, right? If you look at localhost called an 8080, hit enter, you get an error page because there is nothing mapped here. What I'd like to do is when you hit this URL, load the React frontend app, okay? And that's gonna make a call to the APIs from there on. So the Spring Boot is gonna serve both the React app at its root and then the APIs at their different API locations, which is what I want. So the way to do that is by basically copying whatever is in this build folder, the index.html folder part to src main resources and then a public folder. Whatever you put in src main resources public is going to be served over here. So if you put index.html over here, that is what's gonna load when you do this, localhost called an 8080, right? So if I were to create a new file called index.html and here I have a Hello. I might have to reload this. You see, hello shows up, okay? So I want my built React app to go over there. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to delete this index.html that I've created. And now in my package JSON, which is the React package, I'm going to add something to the build, okay? So here is here is this build script. Build script does this. So I want it to do one more thing. I want it to do, I want it to copy, after this build is done, I want it to copy everything in this build folder to main resources public, okay? And I do that by using xcopy because I'm on Windows. This little change, it's gonna be a cp command if you are on Mac or Linux. Uh, I'm just going to do a dot slash build slash star x copy and I have to escape this dot slash build slash star. So everything inside the build directory needs to go to um, I have to go one level up dot dot slash and that's going to go to over here and now I have to go to main resources. Okay. I'm gonna to go to main slash resources slash public. And uh, I'm gonna have it copy everything and uh, with a slash S and a slash Y to say, don't ask me for confirmation, just copy everything automatically, okay? So now notice what happens if I run, uh, if I go to um, front end, src slash frontend. And now if I do a yarn build, it is going to run the build and it is also going to copy those assets into src main resources public, okay? So what I'm doing here is basically running an xcopy command. It's a Windows command. This can be, um, you know, something else for other uh, operating systems. It will be a cp command for, uh, you know, Unix and uh, Linux and Mac operating systems but I'm doing, saying copy everything from this build directory. These double slashes are for escaping. The slash is an escape character, so I need double slashes. So it's dot slash build slash star to dot dot slash main slash resources slash public, and then slashes slash y to kind of copy the whole thing and without asking for a prompt. Now, if you go to uh, public over here, that didn't quite work, let's see. Did I save this? I have saved this. Yarn build. Okay, I need to do and here. I missed that, right? It, I'm sending two commands, okay? So this is the first command, React scripts build, and the next command is xcopy, right? Sorry about that. Let's run this one more time. And now it should copy. So you see this? It's taking 
the first command and the second command is going to run the first one, create the build and then do a copy. All right, it looks like it's copied it. Uh, let's take a look. SRC main, okay, public has this. So now if I restart the Spring Boot application, I'm going to get the page. It's going to fail, but I'm going to have the page. It's going to fail because, can you guess? Developer tools, network. Well, it actually worked. Not bad. I had to wait for the APIs to go up. Okay, so this one actually works. Awesome. I was thinking ahead. So I'm able to get the, the Spring Boot app, basically load this stuff over here, right? It's basically loading it in the same in the same page. So now the thing that I was I need to do, and this is what I thought would break, but it obviously doesn't break here, is that the URL is hard coded. Okay, so if you go to the dashboard, the, to the front end uh, page, go to SRC components. You see here the the REST API call that gets made in the pages components. For example, this one, right? The REST API call is going to localhost colon 8080. That's not going to work, right? When you deploy it to uh, an external cloud provider like AWS or whatever, there's not going to be localhost anymore. So let me see if I can just do a slash team and get it to work, okay? I'm going to make this slash team. Slash team here. And then uh, team page is going to be slash team. So it's basically going to take the the place where it has loaded it. Okay. So let's try this and see if it works. If not, we might have to set up like a config where we specify the URL. Okay. So I'm going to restart this. Well, okay, this is the other problem that we need to fix, but I think we can do that. All right, so this seems to be working fine, all right? So just by adding a slash fixes it. It's basically looking at the route at which it uh, it is deployed. So wherever you deploy it, it is gonna look up the team for that thing, okay? Uh, the thing to remember is that when, you, when you're developing it, it is gonna be a different thing. So you will need to set, you will need to change that thing there, okay? So, um, we can create like a like a, an environment variable and set that there. Um, let me actually do that so that it's easy for uh, folks to develop when we do this. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here to the env file env, and I'm gonna set one more property here. I'm gonna call this React App API root URL equals. And uh, this is going to be HTTP colon localhost colon 8080, right? So this is going to be only in development, okay? When we are doing an actual production build, then this is going to be empty. And over here in my um, components, I'm going to use this. I'm going to do process.env.reactAppAPIRoute, right? That makes it a little bit easier to manage these, um, these URL changes when we do this. Okay, and uh, I don't have a slash in my env file, do I? Yeah, I don't have a slash, so this is perfect. Okay, so this is going to be fetching from over here. So there's going to be process.env.react app API root URL. Oh, you can also create like a separate service which creates this uh, this URL and can have this be a reusable function, but that's fine for now, okay? Oh, when you're creating your uh, React uh, constants, make sure it's a React app underscore, okay? Otherwise, React is not gonna read it. In you, whatever you put in your env file, the constant name should be React app underscore, React underscore app underscore, and then whatever else, okay? Otherwise, it's not gonna work. All right, match is also gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna put this over here. 
and uh, it is going to fetch that data and then team is also going to be this thing okay i think i think this is the way to create a comment okay and uh i guess i will know once i deploy this all right i'm just going to do a yarn build one more time and verify that this works so when you're developing what you need to do is comment this one or remove this line and then add this line okay i'm going to restart my spring boot server and verify that this works okay this is still a problem we're going to tackle that in a bit but uh yeah this one still seems to be working okay so i'm gonna i uh, make a comment here saying use this line when developing locally okay all right so now on to the problem that we've noticed a couple of times right it didn't work so i i can navigate to this thing right and went from root navigated to this thing and now notice what happens if i refresh this it fails why is it failing it's failing because what this is doing is looking at teams and then this url and trying to give it to the spring boot app okay if the first thing that loads is the react app react knows how to route right react knows how to go from one page to another page based on the way you click it it kind of takes over the routing but when you refresh the first request is always going to go to spring boot i mean spring boot is going to be like okay there is is there a teams there there's nothing in spring mvc controllers you know in the spring boot app to handle teams so it's going to be like yeah there's an error okay we don't want that so there are a couple of ways to fix it one way to fix it is by um having mappings for all these different urls go to the react app the easier way to fix it is just to use hash router okay when you use a hash router what happens is you get an additional hash over here okay you get a hash in the url and now this is going to ensure that whatever you put over here is going to go directly to index.html it's still going to be localhost colon 8080 that's it and then anything after this is going to go to react and if i hit enter you notice it's going to go to the react page okay so if i use hash router in react it is going to look at the rest of the url after the hash and then it's going to do whatever it needs right it's going to do the right thing so using a hash uh, router is fairly simple i'm going to go to app.js which is where i have the browser router i just need to change this to hash router okay and now it is going to it's going to do the right thing i'm going to do yarn start to run this locally uh, of course this is going to fail now but um you'll get the idea yeah it's going to fail but you notice here there is a slash over here which is what we want now if i were to build this this is going to work just fine okay let me show you i'm going to do a yarn build so it's going to build and copy the the files over to the spring boot app okay now if i restart my spring boot app everything will magically work all right let's refresh okay now you see this that's it's picked up the hash and it's still it's still working i can refresh and it still works because the root is going to um is going to the react app even this one i can refresh and it still goes to the react app okay this is what we want so this is an easier way to solve the problem if you're really picky and you don't want the hash there but then you're going to have to configure your spring boot app to say hey any url that fits the react route needs to take needs to respond with the react html okay and then the react again the react app again knows what to do when you load that app for that url all right so now i'm going to run the maven install one more time and uh, let's deploy this okay let's deploy this to 